Britain president. <laughs> In May 2024, President Cyril Ramaphosa signed the NHI bill into law, setting the wheels in motion for South Africa to achieve universal health coverage. A move which garnered criticisms regarding its constitutionality and subsequent promises of court action should it be signed into law. One party which kept its promise is the Board of Healthcare Funders. The BHF charges in its heads that the High Court has jurisdiction and it is called upon to adjudicate the legality and rationality of the President's decision. This is to the extent of whether the President took all of the necessary steps in terms of Section 79, Subsection 1, whether the rationality of the President's decision was poisoned by a failure to take the submissions of stakeholders into account, and whether the President exercises power within the constitutional bounds set by Section 79, Subsection 1 of the Constitution. Head of Research at the Board of Healthcare Funders, Charlton Murave, elaborates. Um, I think the frustration of a lot of stakeholders is that ever since the NHI process began, there has been extensive engagement in that process. There has been research and input given to the process of uh, bringing this bill into law. And the greatest regret has been that this has not been taken into account. So we, uh, we now are sitting with a piece of legislation which really does not reflect that engagement process or the in in input that was provided. The president, however, in the signing of the bill into law, differed. The parliament that adopted this legislation was democratically elected and its members carried an electoral mandate to establish the national health insurance. So they did not just dream of it on their own, much as they were inspired by what the drafters of the African claims said in 1943. But they were very careful in making sure that it goes through Parliament, various committees, various consultation processes, and it is carefully considered by all and sundry, including myself as president. Having given it due consideration, I have now arrived at the conclusion that it must be an act of parliament. In addition, in his heads of arguments, the president contends that the BHF's case is a constitutional one and does not fall within the jurisdiction of the High Court, but rather the Constitutional Court, contending that only the Apex Court can determine whether the president failed to comply with his constitutional obligations. As a result, the president seeks the dismissal of the BHF's bid, which he contends is quote-unquote fatally defective. A date is yet to be set for hearing. Kani Mapanga, SABC News, Johannesburg.